Ableton 12 is live to the public and I've finally gotten my hands on it. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the features that I'm most excited about that overlap with how I do things with my workflow, but also to give you a sneak peek under the hood so you can make the best decision and know if Ableton 12 is for you or maybe not so much for you. But I am super excited like a kid in a candy store. So let's get it. And before we jump in, uh, I just wanna say that I got uh, Push 3 in front of me and I've got the whole thing. I've got Push 3 with Ableton 12 in front of me. So the full experience, which is a big part of what I feel connected to with Ableton 12 is the MPE, is the note generation, is the expressiveness, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we're gonna go through the main features that I'm super excited about. We're gonna play around, we're gonna check out some sounds, check out some features and have a good time. So the first thing I wanna point out is the MIDI tools. Okay, so with this upgrade came a bunch of new ways to manipulate MIDI, to generate MIDI, to transform MIDI, to edit MIDI, all this kind of stuff. And a lot of the emphasis is placed on generation and transformation. And this is exactly the third stage that I use in my music production system, the workflow I use, the system I teach as well, where the third phase is coming from the wake of having created a lot of ideas, the best of those ideas, you take the time to experiment with them, to play with them, to transform them, modify them, shorten them, lengthen them, to see what other ideas can happen before going ahead and trying to compose a song in the hopes of developing those ideas further and having already a solid inclination as to what a song structure could be for that particular idea. So I wanna start there since it is super aligned with how I work. And if you're interested in learning more about the system that I personally use and teach my students and clients, I actually just finished wrapping up designing a brand new Notion template that explains the system in detail, all of the stages. It's a song tracker for tracking your projects as it moves through the system and gives you super detailed action items for each stage of the system to take your ideas all the way from the beginning to a finished pro sounding mix and master. And more specifically, what we're talking about is the extract phase. So if I open this, like this stage is exactly what Ableton 12 brings to the table is the best way to have good ideas is to have a lot of ideas, right? And right here again, we're just experimenting and trying to discover these ideas and explore with these ideas more by transforming them, changing them, all this kind of stuff, right? So if you're interested in grabbing this template and learning more about the system, grab it in the link below, okay? But I'm gonna hop back over to Ableton. I actually went through these presets, right? So this is what the kit looks like. And with push three, I'm telling you, the MPE with this MPE kit on Meld, it just blew my mind. And I probably spent like half an hour just playing with this kit. But here's what some of the sounds sound like. Some wild samples right using meld but look at how this kit responds as i move my finger across the pad and also how long i hold the pad notice how the sample changes a little bit as i'm playing it Right? So with this kind of stuff, you can really get vibey really quick. Good times, right? Go ahead and bounce back to 12 here and talk about some of these MIDI tools, okay? So for now, I'm just gonna double click here to create a new clip and we have this new kind of clip view over here. I'm just gonna bring this real big so we can see it. And I'm just gonna like go ahead and uh, pencil something in for now. So let's find something that's somewhat like a hi-hat, so maybe this guy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pencil in, just duplicate this guy a ton. Just a super simple hi-hat pattern, right? And maybe we'll throw in a snare somewhere here. So let's find the snare on the two and four of why not. Hit this little headphones, so we can hear them, right? Cool, so we got this. Okay, so nothing special there. And the first thing to point out is that there's both generate tools and transform tools. So if we look right here, I'm just gonna close the info button right here. That's a nice little addition. We're gonna close that for now. 
And you can see that in the MIDI clip editor here, we have a transform view and we have a generate view. So I'm gonna open these, I'm gonna close these for now, just so we can focus on them. And we have these two engines, okay? And these are engines to help us manipulate MIDI. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is let's go ahead and check out generate. And what this does is you wanna choose the notes that you wanna generate something for. So maybe let's go ahead and choose this kick, right? And we can see from the drop down, we can pick what we want to generate for. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the kick sweep. Why not? And then from here, you wanna kind of decide what kind of note you wanna generate here, right? So we have steps, pattern, density, all these controls. And you'll notice as soon as I start playing with this, it starts to generate notes, right? With these different controls. So let's go ahead and just give this a listen while I'm modifying some of this stuff. All right, so really quickly, you can see we got a bunch of different kick patterns, right? Just by changing this generate control on the kick channel. Now, one thing to highlight here is we have this generate button on or off. With it on, all these changes that you're making here will make the changes in real time, right? So as playback is running, I can change these knobs and we're gonna hear the changes in real time, right? So if I press play and I move this, you'll notice that the generate functions happens automatically because this is turned on. So you can make changes in real time and maybe once you find something you like, you stop and maybe make a duplicate, etc. right? But if you didn't want it to be changed in real time, right, we could turn off the generate button and notice that it took off all those notes and now it's waiting for us to set the parameters. Maybe you want the step duration to go down to 16th notes right? We can do all this kind of fine stuff, play with this and hit generate and it will create those notes. Okay. So now we have a pattern. Let's listen to it. Right. And now if I change this, it's going to change it live, right? Again, because generate is on, but if we have it off and we hit this little button, then we can generate new variations. We can change the parameters, hit this generate button once again, right? get all sorts of different patterns just by playing with these, right? So fun, awesome, fun stuff, okay? Uh, another thing that's worth noting is there's a bunch of MIDI editing functions that have been added here as well. Okay, so on Mac, I figured it out. You hold Option and E, okay? So Option E, and you'll notice that when you hover over a MIDI note that you have this new little cursor, right? And then my lovely mouse drawing stuff. <laughs> but for here, you can scroll and get the division of notes. You can divide notes and get hi-hat rolls like super quick, right? Going to triplet, maybe we go here and we go something crazy like six, right? So now just as easy as that, I split those MIDI clips into tiny little notes really quick for editing. So let's check this out. Right, so awesome stuff, right? So we have all these different engines for the MIDI generator. The rhythm one makes most sense for maybe some drums, but if we wanted to check out a seed generator, I think this one's better suited for melodies. All right, so I just loaded this onto the push. Very cool, very like kind of almost hong drum-esque sound, right? So we're gonna work with this one with the seed generator. So we'll go back to Ableton here and I'm just gonna create a new MIDI clip here. And now we're gonna check out the seed generator. You have a pitch range that you can choose from. So maybe C1 to C4 is good. Uh, duration, you can play with the duration amount. So maybe we want slightly faster notes, right? So we'll, we'll skew it to this direction. And then velocity, yeah, let's just leave it here. Voices, let's leave it to one for a melody. And then density, let's go with decently dense. Let's see what this thing can do and generate something. So now we have a melody that it generated for us automatically. And I'm gonna go ahead and play it. Right? So it shows you all these different ideas and generates all these notes, right? Very quickly. 
And I think here we can highlight the scale that we're in, which is C major. And I think we can go ahead and change this to minor, go ahead and fold this, highlight the scale um, and see if it works this way. Right. So now you'll notice that it generated notes in C minor instead of C major. Right. So let's unfold this. So you'll notice that all the notes are lining on C minor instead because we changed the global scale control, which is the next thing that we'll talk about. Right. But let's just check this out. Right. Maybe the pitch is too low. So you want to bring it up here, go here, higher octave range, generate from here. Cool. That's pretty cool. And then let's say you wanted to make this longer, right? We could just double loop, right? Easy as that. I'm just going to select the second half of notes, right? And then from here, right, we could have fun and actually transform or recombine these in different ways. So if you go back to transform here, we have arpeggiate, but maybe we want to go to, uh, let's see here, recombine and see how it can change this. So look how it rotates these notes in the second half, right? You could do all sorts of stuff, mirror, right? All these transform functions, which are amazing to get different variations. So let's give this a go. All right, so easy as that, right? I just got a second half to this phrase that sounds pretty good. Another cool MIDI editing function that they added is that you can group notes together and adjust their chance together. So if you've been using 11 for a while, you know that you can adjust the chance of different notes, right? So if you bring this up, right, we can see the velocity, but maybe we want to see the chance as well, right? So then we can drag this little window up, bring the chance, hard to get it. There we go. So now we have a chance control and by default, it's set to hundred percent so that everything plays all the time. But before you could take this note and maybe decrease the chance and make it play only 75% of the time or 25% or whatever you want. But now you can group notes together. So maybe we want to group this whole last group of notes here and adjust their chance together, right? So that instead of just one of them playing and the other one maybe playing as well, let's just treat it like a whole fill, right? And if one of these notes don't play, all the rest don't play as well. So I think you can right click here and let's see if we can find this group notes. Let's try that. There you go. Now we have one chance control for all these notes, right? With that, you can have like dynamic loops that have drum fills or have melodic fills in them. And they will kind of have the whole fill playing or none of the fill playing, which is super awesome for creating some variation. All right. So we just looked at some MIDI tools, which are awesome. But the next thing I want to cover is one of the new synths inside of Ableton 12, which is Meld and some of its amazing features. Let's look at Meld. So Meld is this awesome kind of new MPE synth with a bunch of cool features inside of it that I'm excited to play with. So let's go ahead and load. It has basic shapes, of course, just like a, a sine wave. But one thing that's really cool about it is it's dual basic shapes, which is a combination of two shapes together. Right. So you can kind of decide how much of each you want. So now we're kind of getting both a sine wave and a square wave. Right. So that's cool enough. Right. You can play with the filters, all the typical synth controls that you would see. Right. You get a combination of these two shapes right at a basic level and you can start modulating it filtering it etc and one really cool thing that we can do is with these two shapes we can detune them from each other and start getting a harmonic relationship but notice how that's you know kind of minor secondy <laughs> pretty dissonant right but now we have a decent relationship and if i go to my hands here right right it's almost like each note on push is playing a chord right? And if we go back here, right, like we can continue detuning things and get like a relationship between these two shapes. Now, here's where one of the amazing things about Meld comes in is it has this little button here in the corner, which is scale awareness. Okay. And a lot of devices and effects, I, I believe inside of Ableton 12 have this scale awareness feature, which will affect some of its controls. If I go ahead and hit this button now, meld is listening to what 
scale we have selected for our global scale. So in this case, it's C minor up here, right? And what this does is check this out. It's pretty awesome. The detune ratio will follow the scale of our master scale setting. All right, so if I could just play one note, right, I'm just gonna play one note here on my hand and I'm gonna go through this detune and listen to how much more musical this is. Right, so notice that it detunes these two shapes from each other, but in a musical way following that scale, right? So you can get some really cool sounding kind of vibes and you can control this live with push. If we go to these shapes, you'll notice there's a little symbol beside the oscillators that are scale aware, right? So maybe we go to swarm saw and we can do the same thing here. And notice how when I start detuning and changing the spacing that it all sounds in key with the scale that we're in, right? So let me show you that on push. So right here, right? Just playing a note with no spacing, just a pretty standard synth sound, right? But as soon as you start spacing these two shapes from each other, Right, so you can get some really epic sounds really quick. And the final thing I wanna note here is that some of the filters here also have scale awareness, right? You can see these little logos here. Uh, I think this one is also scale aware, right? So let's see what this does. Right, so instead of filtering the synth just by frequency, you're filtering it by the scale, right? Which is so trippy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can use your filters musically, right? You could just perform your filter. <laughs> uh, good times. The next thing I want to cover is the scale awareness feature, which we looked at a bit, but also the tuning feature in Ableton. Now, this is going to be more useful to some people than others, but if you've ever been into checking out different tunings or been curious about different tuning systems and how they can sound and playing them, I think it could be such a game changer to make your music sound different than 99% of everything else out there, which could be a good, a good thing or a bad thing, right? All right, so let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm gonna go back to Ableton here and you'll notice that we have a whole selection for tunings in the browser, okay? And what we can do here is actually select a different tuning for our whole set to be tuned to which is so trippy, right? So we have all these different scales and tunings. And just one note on tunings is that, like if I go to push here, the most common and typical way that most of us have experienced music and that we've listened to music through is called the equal temperament system that takes an octave, so a frequency and a double of that frequency, which is very easy to recognize. <laughs> right? So the way that equal temperament works is it's, from a Western culture, right? Western tradition, basically, right? The most common thing that we all use. But in this octave, we have 12 notes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, back home to one. So we have 12 total notes that divides an octave. Now, the root, the perfect fifth, those two intervals are almost universal across multiple different tuning systems, but the amount of subdivisions and the specific frequency of those subdivisions can be different. So let's actually go ahead and check one of these out. Let's go ahead and find just something that I have no idea what it is. This one is called Dastga Afshari. Dastga Afshari, I apologize for totally butchering that. But now our scale theoretically is going to be tuned to this. So let's go ahead and try and play this on push. Right? Really different. And now we just have different scale features on push. I just discovered this right now. So if you're on push and if you hit scale here, I only have so many options, five semitones, six semitones. <laughs> Look at all these, it's so weird. So we have this now. Right, so notice how that's a little bit different than your typical sound. All right, so this is wild stuff where now push is tuned to this completely different tuning that I've never heard before. And if you use push to 
you know, create your MIDI clips throughout a whole track, we'll be able to access tunings that have, would have been so hard to access before because traditional instruments like a piano or a guitar are typically made with equal, equal temperament, right? So it opens a whole other world. This is, this is so wild. This is blowing my mind live on the spot, right? But like, listen to this. very different than maybe what you're used to, right? Um, so if tuning is something you wanna explore and check out, like, pfft, like this is mind blowing, <laughs> that's all I'll say. And then, yeah, if you wanna delete a tuning, all you gotta do is select it similar to the groove pool and then just delete it. And then you're back to equal temperament, right? Good stuff. I don't know if you've ever heard of 432 Hertz now, I have no opinion about it, <laughs> but there's something to it because a lot of people talk about it. It could be completely psychosomatic or there could be some truth to it. I've went down that rabbit hole a little bit. Um, all I know is that the numbers I think end up being a lot more even in terms of frequency divisions because with 440, once you get up in the higher octaves, you start getting to decimal points. Whereas I think 432, you're working with whole numbers the whole time. Not exactly sure, but if you wanted to check out 432, all you'd have to do is double click here, 32, there you go. So now we're in 432, this is what it sounds like. little bit different, right? Go to 440. Very subtle difference. But hey, if you want to do 432, boom, there you go. You make your own tunings. You could save this as your own, which I will, and call it 432 bro. Hertz. So now I have that tuning saved and I can just reload it whenever I want to. And we're going to kick it in 432 for now. So the next thing I want to talk about is another new device that Ableton introduced called Roar, which is a multi-band distortion and saturation engine. And from my background, like I'm a rocker, right? Like I've been playing electric guitar for 15 years. I play in a prog rock, hard rock, psychedelic band. I've been in metal bands. I love distortion. So I love distortion and overdrive. It's one of my favorite effects. And I had always been curious about like multi-band saturator, like Saturn II. But as soon as I saw Ableton 12 announce Roar, I was immediately curious. So let's go ahead and just give it a check out. Why don't we? So now we have this Roar device on our keyboard, right? And we can drive it up, get some distortion and yeah, very cool. And I still have to learn more about Roar, but let's go ahead and see some crazy stuff, creeping feedback. Whoa, <laughs> let's, let's go through the hands here. Okay, check this out. So we got some cool distortion there, but check out what happens if I hold this down. There's like a self modulating distortion engine here. All right, and next I'm gonna look at probably the most front-facing change inside of Ableton 12, which is the UI and the browser. So they brought a bunch of changes to basically how you're navigating around Ableton from a UI perspective, as well as how to find your sounds and instruments. So let's go ahead and check that out. So the first thing that you've probably noticed is that as we were browsing here, we have this whole filters section of the browser. Right, so that's a great improvement. So here, let's say we go to our samples, we can filter by loop, one shot, all these different sounds, the drums, and there's all these different drop downs that can actually filter down what you're looking for. So let's say we're looking for a loop and I wanted maybe sound to be keyboard, piano, and let's go with a character being lo-fi and vinyl. And now we have one result. Right, so got that result, which is not bad. All right, so that's awesome that you can search the 
browser through filters instead of just through name. Nice little feature there. And another thing that I think is probably even more useful in my opinion is this little edit button here is that you can tag your own sounds with your own labels, right? So I think you can create a new group and or a new tag, right? And call it maybe, uh, I'll just call it Aljoy, one of my aliases. Cool, so now I have an Aljoy tag. All right, so I've added my own group and I can add my own tags in my own group. And then once you have a sound selected, you can ha tag it with favorites, I believe. There we go. So now you can tag those things as you so choose. And later, I think I'll be able to search favorites in a filter. So if I go back here to sounds and we get out of edit, right? We go into filters. You see, Aljoy is its own category now of the browser filtration. I get favorites and there's my one favorite, right? So you can have your own tagging system, which might be more useful for you. And you can actually just search and filter through your own tagging system instead of Ableton's tagging system. They also have an engine that lets you find similar sounds. So for example, if I go back here to my favorites and we choose this, you see this little button over here? This will show similar sounds in Ableton and rank them in order of how similar they are, right? Right, so this is a very easy way to find other sounds that are similar to what you're working with, which is excellent once you get into the composition stage and edit stage of your production to find complementary sounds that maybe add a little bit of extra character to an existing sound, but slightly different, right? So finally, I just wanna talk about the general UI stuff that Ableton has built in here, like just, nice things to have, like the back and forward arrow in the browser, right? With this control, like you can see the tuning and the groove pool, or you could decide, you know what, I don't wanna see either of those if you're not using them that often, right? You can close the browser as you could always, right? There's a little info button here, which is just, it used to be in the view to see info, which you could still do here, but there's a dedicated button, which makes it a lot more accessible, which is great. And then one of the bigger things is actually the combination of being able to see session view and arrangement view at the same time. So in the past, when you've had to work uh, in session view and arrangement view, you'd have to jump back and forth if you wanted to see your mixer controls like this, and then jump back to your arrangement or have a second monitor, which is what I usually do. But now you can actually have multiple windows open. So if we go here, we can see everything that we want to see at the same time. So we might want to look at track options. And now, as you can see, we have both the mixer control and our arrangement view at the same time, as well as our device view. And you could go even farther to see our MIDI clip at the same time. If you were in arrangement view and you're selecting a clip, like let's say we just click and drag this clip over to session to arrangement view here, right? Now you can see all of this information at the same time if that's how you like to work. Right, so if you're working on a laptop, well, you can see your arrangement up here. You can select clips. You can see what's inside the clip here. You can see the device and your mixer controls all at the same time, right? So you have a lot more flexibility as to how you're interfacing with Ableton and you can have both device view and clip view live. So you can close just clip view. You can have one open or both or neither. So this is actually handy if the way that I could see myself using this is definitely using clip view and device view at the same time. This is game changing because if you want to do automation for a parameter, instead of menu diving, going back and forth, you could just select the parameter and do automation in the clip, right? So your notes, envelopes, and MPE data are all up here, which actually makes a lot more sense. But let's say you're working in a clip and you wanted to work on envelopes for a specific parameter, right? You go into your envelopes and you just click that parameter, boing, and now you're automating that parameter for your clip right here. So super game changing, a lot to discover here, right? But it shows you the parameter you're editing here. So you can edit automation inside a clip while being able to see the device at the same time, which is game changing. If you just want to see all of your track options here, right? Then you might not need to see them in session view and just focus on your clips here, right? Just focus on the clips and the device. And then over here, you can have all your mixer controls.
right? All right, so there's all the top features that I'm most excited about inside of Ableton 12. And for me, it was a complete no brainer. The MIDI transformation tools, generation tools, the MPE synth being meld, the amazing roar device that I've yet still to figure out and learn how to use. Um, and then the UI stuff is nice, but I am all about the MPE performance stuff, the MIDI transformation. So for me, absolute no brainer because it aligns so much with my workflow. But is Ableton 12 for you? Well, I think, again, it always depends on the use case and what kind of user you are. People will bash Ableton and be like, there's not enough upgrades in this version to warrant the price. And other people will be like, it's the best piece of software in the world. And the truth is that it depends on what kind of user you are, what kind of musician, what kind of producer you are, what you want to do with Ableton, how you like to work, what your strengths are. So there's a lot of nuance as to if this is for you or not, but I just want to share my top favorite features that I'm excited about and why it was an absolute yes for me to see if some of those might align to be a yes for you or a no, totally cool. And we just scratched the surface of what's possible with Ableton 12. If you're interested in learning more about it and have a complete breakdown of all the new features and learning it at a deep level to really express yourself through the software at a whole other level, I invite you to click this card and check out the video where I break it down in depth. And hey, I'd also love to know, what do you think about Ableton 12? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that said, I will see you in that next video.